For those of you who have not used continuous curvilinear capsulorexis, I'd like to talk about the basics of the technique and how I would suggest that you get started. I would choose a case that has no vitreous pressure, no orbital pressure in fact, in other words a good block, and then not a young case where there might be uh, intralenticular pressure in these soft cataracts, even though they have excellent visualization. But a uh, average cataract that still has good reflex, but not a real elastic capsule and not a brittle capsule, and a good sized pupil so that you get a good reflex. For your first few cases, I would definitely recommend a viscoelastic because this helps to neutralize the vitreous pressure and maintain adequate room in the anterior chamber for maneuvering the instruments. And when you first start, you want to use a capsule forcep and you need a l adequate room in the anterior chamber. I'd like to show you now this case where we're using Orcolon, which can be recognized by its very definite noodling as it goes into the chamber before it fills the chamber. This has left us adequate room for the capsule forcep. At this point, one has to decide whether to use the capsule forcep or the cystotome. Usually the central puncture is made with a cystotome, but with the newer capsule forceps with a more sharply pointed end, the initial opening can be made, as you will see here, by just pinching the capsule centrally. Once the tear is started, it is re-grasped in multiple positions to control the direction of the tear. Notice the hand position and movements, again with the wound, the fulcrum, and the left hand helping to stabilize the forceps. The initial puncture can theoretically be made anywhere on the capsule, but I recommend a central puncture. You will see some surgeons starting in the uh, diameter of the capsulorexis, but this has the danger of creating a little discontinuity in the edge and difficulty in completing with a smooth edge. So I recommend central puncture. This central puncture can be made, as you saw in this case, either with the forcep. More commonly, a cystotome is used. We make this central puncture, and I recommend a somewhat horizontal triangle, and then extend it just a ways with the cystotome, maybe even out to the radius that you want to start the tear and then change to the capsule forcep, which will give you the ultimate control as you extend it around in a curvilinear fashion. One may need to change the grasp of the edge with the forcep to maintain the best control. So you could ch change the grasp here to extend a little farther and then re-grasp then extend a little farther and then re-grasp. So you may change at many points as long as you're maintaining control of the vector forces. The best control is always when you're closest to the uh, tear at any point. The farther one is away from the tear with the instrument, the less control. So bringing then with multiple re-grasps around to finish on the circle. And when you have little experience, you will find that you will move your forcep frequently to maintain good control as you get more experience and learn those vector forces and the changing direction, which has to be different 
direction than they tear, you will tear larger arcs without moving your forcep. We uh, don't have to end up with a circle to still have an edge that is resistant to tear. So in your early experience, you may have a tear that looks undulating. As you uh, have not had experience in those vector forces, but this is still as safe an opening through which to remove the cataract and insert the lens as a perfect circle. So don't be dismayed by not getting a perf perfect circle. It will still be a good capsulorexis. But as you get experience, then you will find that your tear becomes a more and more perfect circle. On this surgical videotape, we will illustrate, first of all, my method of continuous curvilinear capsulorexis using forceps and cystotome. Starting with the cystotome to make a central puncture, carrying it radially, then counterclockwise to finish at the point where the radial tear turned circumferentially. With viscoelastic in the chamber, there's no irrigation, but the cystotome is merely used to create the central puncture and start the tear. The cystotome is turned, so the point dips down into the cortex to form a triangular tear. Then it's moved to extend the lower part of the tear, which is upper on the screen, with multiple movements until the tear has extended to the radius desired for the capsule rexus. And you can see the cystotome is now pulling toward the wound and the tear is turning circumferentially. So at this point, illustrating that with a central triangular puncture, a radial tear, and then turning circumferentially, formed by these multiple movements of the cystotome, illustrated by the arrows. Again, pulling mostly toward the wound, but watching the tear. It's extended enough to now grasp with the forceps. The point we want to grasp the capsule is right close to the tear, because the closer one is to the tear, the better control one has. You can see now in slow motion that uh, we have a fold created in the capsule and the tear is extending now using a shearing motion and the tear will really follow along where the folded edge is laying on the surface of the capsule. You can see that a broad sweeping motion of the cystotome is used there. One doesn't watch the tip of the cystotome or the forceps, but watches the tear. As long as it's progressing appropriately, you can continue tearing without re-grasping. There we see the tear completed at the point where the original radial tear turns circumferentially.